After some retirement rumors earlier on in the season, Milos Raonic actually started playing tennis again on the grass courts in the Netherlands a couple weeks back. S. Hertogenbosch. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with grass courts in the Netherlands on that one. Whether or not he does retire at the end of the season, we don't really know, but one thing seems to be certain, New Balance is ready to flip the page on his signature shoe. I'm back on court everybody, the ankle is feeling much better and I've missed playing tennis so much, but I've got some bad news. The New Balance Lab is dead. The original one will go down as an absolute cult classic. Honestly, if you were lucky enough to own a pair, you know how special it was. I think we're still getting people asking about it to this day. It's gone, guys. I'm sorry, it's been gone for years. It's time to move on. Before we do move on though, remember that you can check out these shoes on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, and please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let me know down in the comments what you think of these shoe reviews. I know they're a little bit different to the usual tennis racket content that we do. Also, if it looks like I'm sweating, that's because I am. It's 100 million degrees in this room and I don't have an air conditioning unit, so... Yeah. Back to the lab though. The second one definitely wasn't as popular as the original. The upper was much stiffer and it just didn't have that same easy to wear feel. But that's all over now because the lab is done and New Balance totally went back to the drawing board in developing the CT Rally. Oh wait, no they didn't. The Rally might as well be called the Lab V3. It has the same general silhouette, it's built on the same lab, and it's pretty obviously New Balance's hardier stability shoe, which was the whole point of the Lab line. That's not to say nothing has changed though. New Balance has made some big updates here, mainly to the upper, and it's a big improvement coming from the V2, starting with the aesthetic. They've gone for this dark kind of retro-y color scheme here, which is really cool. It's not overly in your face, but it definitely has some personality, which I always really appreciate in a tennis shoe. I also love that they're releasing this in the middle of the summer, and it's a 95% black colorway. That's a super wise decision. Whoever designed this, I like where your head is at, but maybe in the future, let's go for a slightly lighter colorway when the sun is shining brightest. Just food for thought. It's kind of funny though, because as dumb as it is to release a predominantly black shoe right now, I actually didn't find it to be overly warm at all. I even tried it with black socks because I literally can't stand the look of white socks with black shoes, and I still didn't really find any breathability problem whatsoever. That's definitely a big step coming from the previous lab because that shoe had a thick and dense upper material with very few perforations, so it definitely had a tendency to overheat. The upper on the Rally is much thinner, softer, and has perforations throughout that did a really good job of keeping my foot cool, but also because it is softer, it just has a more natural and comfortable wrap around my foot. The heel portion has also gotten quite a bit more comfortable. On the V2, there were these really thick, dense pieces of foam that could cause a bit of awkward pressure around the ankle collar. On the Rally, they're much smaller and softer, and ankle retention is still just as good. Like I mentioned earlier, the actual cut of the shoe hasn't changed all that much coming from the Lav V2. It still fits pretty wide in the toe box, and then has a slightly narrower midfoot and heel portion, and the fit is true to size, if not maybe a touch on the small side of things. But just because the cut and last is the same as on the previous lab doesn't mean the fit isn't much better. For one, this softer and more flexible upper adapts to the foot a bit more naturally, so you've got this more uniform wrap throughout. There's no awkward creasing or pressure points here. I never personally had much of an issue on the V2, but I know some coworkers who did, so that shouldn't be an issue anymore. Also, after just a bit of break and the whole upper gets it's even more flexible, so if there is a bit of that awkwardness at first, it should go away after less than an hour of play. But I'm not done complimenting this fit, and this kind of goes into lockdown as well, which is why I've coupled the two together, but there's one major improvement that I couldn't be happier about. If you've watched any of our shoe reviews before, you'll know how much I appreciate a good lacing system. It's such a simple yet effective way of drastically improving your fit and lockdown, and yet companies seem to be ignoring it all the time, although I guess not as much anymore. As you can see, instead of the more traditional lace holes you have on the V2, the laces go through this sort of cable system on the Rally. This makes it so that when you pull down on the laces, pressure is distributed more evenly across the top of your foot. That means you can tie them tighter without worrying about lace bite or any discomfort. On top of that, you got this much thicker tongue on the Rally than you had on the V2. Again, another piece of tech that is so simple yet so effective, I love poofy tongues because they're just more comfortable and they also allow you to pull down on the laces without worrying about lace bite. All that is to say that the fit and lockdown is just much better on the Rally than it was on the V2. There's much less dead space throughout the shoe so your foot will just react more one-to-one -one with the upper. Genuinely great job, New Balance. There's one thing I'd like to make really clear because it kind of caught me by surprise, but there is a massive difference between the platform you're standing on when these are fresh and after a couple hours of play. The fresh foam midsole here softens up astronomically over time. Right out of the box, it's honestly one of the harder shoes that I've put on my foot, but then after just a tiny bit of play time, it does a complete 180 and becomes super soft, 
almost gushy. The heel portion is especially soft, so for those of you that don't like the harsher ride of more traditional stability shoes, you'll love the cushioning you get here. I wouldn't necessarily call it springy, but it's also not so soft where you feel like you're losing energy during movements. It's the closest sensation I've felt to the GP Turbo, although still not quite on that shoe's level. Whether or not it provides any actual energy return on push-off points, I'm a little hesitant to say. I don't actually think any shoe really boosts performance in that sense, but it at least provides the sensation of energy return, which is half the battle. It's kind of like, does a lightweight shoe actually make you faster? No, not really, but it makes you feel lighter, so it gives you the sensation of being faster. Speaking of weight, they're the same weight as the previous lav. They weigh 382 grams in a size 9.5 US, which is neither heavy nor light. So yeah, make of that what you want. Now, in terms of sliding capabilities, I have to say I'm actually pleasantly surprised. New Balance has never had a shoe that's slippery enough to slide consistently, but this one is very good. You definitely still feel the outsole's grittiness more so than you would on something like a Gel Resolution or Vapor 11, but there isn't nearly as much resistance as on something like the 996. I know some of you regular viewers might be thinking, Luca, what are you doing sliding after an injury to your ankle, no less? And you guys are right, so I didn't slide too much, but I gave them to my coworker, Kai, who is a sliding specialist, and he can confirm what I just said. I'm not kidding about this guy. He makes sliding on hard courts look like he's sliding on clay. Like seriously, it's crazy. He can be standing straight up and still sliding effortlessly. The Lav was, and now the Rally is, New Balance's go-to support and stability shoe. It's by far the best in their line and extremely competitive compared to the rest of the industry in both these categories. So again, because lockdown is so good, there's no unnecessary space or movement inside the upper. And even though it is flexible, it's still laterally quite rigid, so you won't feel any rollover when you are moving from side to side. The upper is a tank, so you'll get fantastic support there. But because the outsole is quite soft and cushiony, you don't have as much bulletproof stability as you could, but it's still very good. This level of softness shouldn't be much of an issue. It'll just take some time to get used to if you're coming from a more rigid shoe. I did find that sometimes the heel was a little bit too squishy and could get a little bit too wobbly, especially at the beginning of my play test. I have been playing with the Vapor Pro and Vapor 11, which are to be fair, extremely rigid shoes, but the Lav is noticeably less rock solid in terms of outsole stability. Still, the upper is built onto a very wide platform with the lateral shank here protruding a little bit outwards past where it is stitched onto, which is great for improving stability and just making it feel like you're standing on a very sturdy base. Full disclosure, I've only put about nine hours of playtime into these shoes, but there are some shoes that I have completely thrashed in that amount of time. So I'm pretty good at putting durability into perspective and these are holding up quite well. For one, the outsole may have softened up significantly compared to what it was out of the box, but I'm pretty sure that's by design and the upper has stayed very firm and rigid. Part of the reason why I hurt my ankle was because the upper on the Vapor Pro had softened up almost to the point of like a running shoe. Now, don't get me wrong, the Vapor Pro is very durable, believe me. This was just like hour 60, so it was probably time to move on, but I liked them so much that I pushed them a little too far. But anyways, the Lab's outsole is also holding up extremely well. Well, and these rubber elements are maybe a little bit scratched up from my trailing foot during the slide, but there's no structural damage to them whatsoever. I really wouldn't worry about durability with these. The only thing is you'll be busting through these laces all the time if you do get really low when you slide. New Balance, maybe that's something for the next one. Maybe adding a little lace cover here on the medial portion would be perfect. If you played with and liked the first and second lav, you'll love the rally. If you didn't like the V2 because it wasn't as comfortable as the original, think of the Rally as a sort of combination of the two. It would have been a better successor to the V1 because it fits so much more naturally, and for those of you that didn't like the two, I think you'll like this one a lot more. At its core, it's a proper stability shoe, but it does have that modern cushiony ride, so for those of you that don't like the rigid and harsh feel of more traditional stability shoes, you'll really like these. Think of them as a more stable but less squishy GP Turbo. I really enjoyed playing with the Rally and it was pretty much the perfect shoe to try coming back from injury because it's stable, it has fantastic ankle retention and lockdown, but it also has that softness so it's not as harsh on my joint and it absorbs a good amount of shock. It might not technically be called the Lav, but it makes me want to say the Lav is back. Don't get me wrong, the V2 was fine, but this is a big improvement, and I definitely think it's going to help make it more popular again. If you do want to try on a pair, come visit our awesome shoe fitters in-store, or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca. I mean, like, the shoes. You can check out the shoes online, not the shoe fitters. Although, we technically do have a profile page for everybody at the store, so I guess you can check out the shoe fitters, but it will be more like a profile page type thing. You're not actually meeting them. Obviously, what am I saying? Okay, nobody's watching. Stop talking. End the video.